Hello everyone and welcome to this week's reviews. The God of Thunder is back for his third solo adventure, but this time he's got help from his fellow Avenger, the Hulk, and a new heroine called Valkyrie. And Loki is in there causing his brand of trouble too. This is Thor Ragnarok. The first Thor was essentially a Shakespearean tale of two brothers mixed with a fish out of water comedy, while the second film was more of a dark fantasy. With Thor Ragnarok, director Taika Waititi takes the buddy comedy approach, and that's part of the film's charm. The film follows the usual Marvel story template, and yes, I would like to see them experiment a bit more. With Waititi on board, I was hoping for that, but the film is still a lot more Marvel's vision than it is his. Nonetheless, I laughed during the hijinks here. Chris Hemsworth is allowed to loosen up a lot more as Thor this time around, and I really liked his chemistry with Hulk and his alter ego Bruce Banner. And Jeff Goldblum is awesome, because, well, he's Jeff Goldblum. The villain Hela is your standard Marvel baddie who wants to rule and destroy the world, so when the story was focused on Thor on that alien planet, I never found myself thinking, hmm, I wonder what Hela is up to right now. However, Kate Blanchett was able to avoid making her boring, as she clearly relishes chewing the scenery. We also get a cameo from another Marvel hero, which I found obviously shoehorned in. The star of the show, though, is Valkyrie. From the second Tessa Thompson makes her entrance, I knew I was going to like this character a lot. I think a lot of people would leave the film loving her the most. She's very funny, but also an incredible fighter, and I cannot wait to see her in more Marvel films. The action is overall well-directed, with a good visual style, and I had a fun time. I wish Waititi was allowed to do more, especially since I loved Hunt for the Wilder People and What We Do in the Shadows, but he produces the necessary laughs nonetheless. Next up, those raunchy mothers are back, and they are celebrating the holidays in a Bad Mom's Christmas. Did you see Bad Moms? Okay, well the sequel is pretty much the first movie again. But now it's Christmas! I thought the first film was amusing enough, but the second one mostly rests on repeating some of the same gags. The story beats are rather similar too, as we have Mila Kunis getting fed up with being the perfect mother, and teaming up with Kristen Bell and Katherine Hahn to shirk responsibilities, right down to the slow motion song montages. That's not to say there aren't chuckle-worthy elements in A Bad Mom's Christmas. I did laugh a fair number of times, but not enough to get past the obvious cliches and sitcom material being thrown at the screen. Of the leads, Han ends up being the funniest. She's usually really good at delivering lines that might otherwise not have worked, although we still get jokes like her constantly talking about a male stripper's genitalia. Cheryl Hines is also perfect casting as Kristen Bell's mother, though that storyline is the one that is most sidelined. With Mila Kunis and Christine Baranski, we get the annoying, ungrateful children cliché. But I'm sorry, in the situation presented in the film, I think Kunis is definitely in the right. A Bad Mom's Christmas is just a fairly forgettable comedy sequel that uses the obvious predictable beats, and this is definitely a case we can tell this production was fast-tracked to take advantage of the success of the first film. Thank you for watching this week's reviews, and I'll see you next time.